Hey, sports fans, it's Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. It's your favorite programming, Socialing the Distance, and we're featuring Maggie Ewan this week. I'm calling her a renaissance thrower because she throws the shot, she throws the discus, she throws the weight, she throws the hammer. Maggie, welcome to Run Blog Run. Hi, thanks for having me. So now where are you based? Uh, I'm in Fargo right now. Okay, so... I'm in Wisconsin, so are you dealing with a little bit of snow and a little bit of cold right now? A lot of cold, yeah. Okay. Now, do you com- do you train outside during the winter, or do you have a, a nice facility indoors? I have a nice facility indoors, because I'm not training in negative 20s. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. I do my, I've done my walk so far uh, about negative 10, mm-hmm. and my girlfriend's from California, and I told her, I said, look, I have a limit. If it's over minus 30, I don't go outside for my walk. And she looked at me like, because I've got this coat that goes like minus 46, you know. Uh-huh. And, and she goes, uh, not real happy about that. But, you know, <laughs> it's just, so I sometimes I just need to get out. Um, so where do you train? What facilities do you train at? Um, I train at Moorhead, Minnesota State Moorhead. It's a D2 oh, okay. school yep, in Moorhead. It's where my, uh, my coach coaches. So they let me in which cool. is no. very thankful and um, who, who is your coach um uh, my coach is kyle long oh cool okay 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 i've, yeah. I've seen him around yeah. I know him. <laughs> so i was just looking up stuff and and the last time i saw you compete was at the match in the belarus uh yeah. and you won the shot and uh, did you enjoy that experience yeah I, definitely um It was really exciting for me because it was kind of the first time in a long time uh, I've actually been able to do two events at a track meet, um, which I haven't done since college, you know, so it was really nice to kind of have that dual experience again and not just go and throw the shot put. I wish I would have done better in the hammer, but we are focusing all on hammer for that or all on shot put for that meet because we Mm -hmm. had worlds coming up. So sure, sure. It was fun though. It was exciting. What was your experience like in Doha? That was a lot of fun. Um, Thankfully, I'd been to a worlds before. So, you know, I I knew how to handle the pressure and like that environment and, you know, being around like that level of competition. but it's always so much fun, you know, to get together with those girls of that quality, you know, on that stage and just be able to, you know, really have a good, solid competition. They're just, it's always so much fun to get up to that level. The first day that I went into the Doha Stadium, mm-hmm. we, had walk, we had to walk a couple miles from there. And um, it was about 110 degrees and I'm carrying yeah. my stuff in with my son and I'm going, dear God. <laughs> and, and he looks at me and he goes, dad, are you going to be okay? And I said, yeah. And then we get in the stadium and we were sitting up top right by the fans and all of a sudden, boom, it hits you. It's like <laughs> 70 degrees. What was it like competing in the stadium? Yeah. I mean, thankfully at the time I had been training in Tempe, Arizona, where it is like a hundred degrees. So I was kind of used to like the heat and everything. Um, And they kept preparing us for it and everything. But really, yeah, once you got inside the stadium, they kept it a very comfortable atmosphere in there for us like competitors where it was almost chilly down on the field. So they definitely took care of us, which we really appreciated. When you were training in Doha, were Mm -hmm. you outdoors or were you in an indoor facility? We were outdoors in the heat and the humidity, and that was intense. But how does that affect the throws? Like, I know how, like, sprinters tell me that they, you know, they kind of dig that 90 to 100 degree stuff, and jumpers tell me, yeah, 80s, 90s rock. How is it for a thrower? Um, you know, it's tough because really it doesn't make that much of a difference. It's just kind of how tough you feel (laughs) as a person, you know, Um, since I've been training in the heat, I was pretty used to it. Um, But I know a lot of them out there are getting really sweaty and uh, going through a lot of chalk through that practice. (laughs) (laughs) What was the first throw that uh, throwing event that you, you took up? 
when you first started to compete? The discus. Okay. Mm -hmm. Was that in high school? That was, yeah, that was almost, that was pre-high school. It was probably maybe like fourth or fifth grade for me. What did you like about the discus? Um, my sister did it. <laughs> and okay. so I wanted to be just like my sister. And uh, yeah, my dad, he, when my sister started throwing, he said, you know, hey, I threw this in college. You want me to give you a hand? And so they would go out and throw and little Maggie wanted to go out too. And so I would just throw in the background and then it was just the one that really stuck with me. Cool. Yeah. Uh, what about the shot put? When did you start with the shot put? I very begrudgingly started the shot put around eighth grade when my dad was like, okay, it's time for you to pick up another event. Uh -huh. I really did not like the shot put at all. <laughs> it was definitely something he had to kind of force me into, but, um, you know, after you get used to an event and you get through that learning phase that everybody has to go through, um, you know, it was a lot of fun and I still really enjoy doing it. Now, what about the hammer? Where did the hammer come? That came in in college because we don't throw it in Minnesota. So I started throwing hammer in college when um, I went out to ASU and Dumble, he basically, he had everybody try it because it's one oh, yeah. of those things that you never know if you have the knack for it unless you try it because it's such a strange movement. Mm -hmm. um, so he had me try it and turns out I had the knack for it. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite event now or do you, uh, is that a hard question to answer? <laughs> it's a little tough. But uh, my favorite probably, honestly, is still discus. Okay. The only one I don't do anymore. Um, but it really is hard to pick a favorite. I mean, really, they're all so unique in their own way that it's kind of like comparing completely different things, really. So if I were watching your feet in the ring when you were throwing the shot, mm -hmm. would I say that you are that you rely a lot on your speed? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> when what I notice when when people are releasing, because I was talking with Ryan Krauser last week, uh -huh. and, and I was asking him when he knows he's got a great throw. Yeah. And he, he took a second and he just kind of said, "Well, when I complete it." Yeah. You know, when I release, how do you know when you have a a, a a a big throw? It's the same. It's all in that last you know milliseconds of feeling of how is it leaving my hand you know like where am I positioned when the shot is released pretty much like you, you so much can go wrong that you really never know until it's completely out of your hand and no longer in your control you know when you're in a big competition there's 80,000 screaming people in a stand you can hear them screaming um, and your coach has somewhere gotten close. If your coach would say something to you, can you hear your coach? Can you like shut out all the other sounds and would you hear your coach in a position um, like that? If I'm close enough, but we, we've always practiced kind of having more so like little subtle, you know, like hand cues and stuff like that because usually when you get to a big competition you're dialed in enough where your coach may only need to kind of point out one or two things that are going wrong and mm -hmm. so we always kind of make like hand gestures and stuff like that for like hey this is for this cue and this gestures for that cue you know so that's kind of how we've always done it because you can't really hear anything during those competitions do you um when you're in the ring and you're going to throw the shot and mm -hmm. you're getting yourself positioned, do you talk to yourself? Do you tell yourself, okay, this is going to be a good throw? That, how, take us through, if, if you're comfortable with that, what yeah. you tell yourself in the ring. Yeah, I mean, for me, it, it really all comes down to every individual throw. Um, you know, because you're always trying to have the best throw you can possibly put together. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and usually it, it comes down to making sure you're doing maybe one cue just right. Um, and so for me, it's always that for me, I always, you know, get my shot, get into the ring, gentle reminder of this is what we're focusing on, you know, take a deep breath and throw. Cause I'm, I'm definitely not like a, let's get super jazzed and super, high energy i'm i'm very much more calm all right let's do things right kind of thrower so for me for me it's always more so just in my head deep breath gentle cue reminder okay let's throw <laughs> when you were in doha and competing did you know where you were in terms of the ranking during the competition are you watching that at all or are you just kind of like yeah. Let's take do one thing at a time. Yeah, so I mean, it's something where you watch, so you're aware, but you don't you don't like put that pressure on yourself, you know, to try and jump up in the ranks. Because mm-hmm. um, for me, I've always been a thrower that's very, you know, there's no offense and defense in throwing, and in a lot of the events of track and field, you know, you can't stop them from having a great performance. You know, like you can only control what you can do. So for me, I like to watch the competition and stay aware of what's going on, but really still focus on myself and what I'm doing and what I just need to do to get that next better throw. And if I do, hopefully it'll move me up in the ranks, but we'll just have to wait and see. If you were talking to a room full of high school girls who are throwing, Mm -hmm. what would you tell them was your biggest mistake in throwing in high school always trying to throw far you know in practice you know because throwing is a very very technical thing and um you know the more you're around throwing the more you hear turns like grip it and rip it and stuff like that you know things that it's like it just feels really good to do things really fast and try to be powerful but when it comes down to it Throwing is a very technical motion and there's certain things, certain positions, certain rhythms that you need to make sure you hit. And so in practice, it's much more beneficial, you know, to be taking throws at 60, 70 percent, you know, maybe slowly, eventually working your way up to those high, you know, full intensity throws. But doing it right is much more important than seeing it go far in practice. If you were with a group of young women in college and you were talking to them, what is the biggest thing you learned as a college thrower? I think the biggest thing I learned as a collegiate is how much mental game there is in throwing. You know, because really at the top end, I think most people have, you know, a lot of the same gifts. You know, they have the ability to throw far. It's just, for me, it always came down to, you know, who's got their head right on the day? Who's got their mind right? Who's been, who's been visualizing the right things? And who's been talking to themselves in the right way, you know, where they're ready to throw far and they're ready to do the things they put their mind to instead of, you know, negative self-talk and worry and doubt. And it's, it's so much a mental game. And I think that's, that's what I really learned in college. What's been the biggest lesson that you've learned as a professional athlete? Ooh, that's, I don't know, as a professional, it's, um, I think probably the biggest thing I've learned so far as a professional is patience, you know, not needing that, that huge throw all the time, but always knowing how to be ready for the most important meets, you know, the biggest, most important. Cause I, my first year out, I had a pretty rough year, you know, wasn't throwing very far, wasn't throwing very far. But when I got into the meets that mattered, you know, I made sure to make those 
opportunities count, you know, and I went from someone who probably shouldn't even been to worlds, you know, made, made worlds at all from how I was performing throughout the year to placing fourth at worlds. And so I, I think I've learned how to, you know, really take advantage of the opportunities and not let poor performances drag you down pretty much. You are managed by Andy Stubbs. Mm-hmm. Um, I've known him forever. He may have the most biting sense of humor of <laughs> any agent or manager, and he's got me a couple times. Um, but I really enjoy him because mm-hmm. he's kind of like no BS. Yes. Um, and a manager agent's job is a challenge with their lead athletes because they can't, they can cheer you up, but they also have to be realistic with you. Yeah. Does he, does he say things to you before you compete? <laughs> does he encourage you? Does he kind of let it be? Or how is he if he's watching you during a competition? Oh, he's super, super encouraging. Very positive. You know, he yeah. knows what we're all capable of and he just, he wants to see us succeed. You know, um, nobody ever wants to watch, you know, their friends and their athletes fail and yeah. very, very positive. Um, but he knows how to keep it real too when you need that. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Now, does your coach come to all your competitions with you? Not all, only kind of the big important ones. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Let's talk about the nature of competition. Uh, there's something that's drawing me to that. Um, can you be a friend with someone that you're competing with intensely week after week? Yeah, definitely. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, now, in the old days, and I'm talking about the 70s when I was competing, um, the way we were trained was that I was buddies with the people I competed on the track with outside of the event but when i got into that four minutes or that 30 minutes Mm -hmm. it it was we were competing against each other and then afterwards we're congrat you know it was always about being respectful whether you did well or didn't do well um how is that is that the way that you see competition now um frankly the people who you know out there i really consider friends you know like Take Chase, for example, we do all of our traveling together. We always room together. You know, we're really good friends. And the way I view it is, you know, we're both pretty fresh out of college still. And as a professional, you know, like you don't have teammates per se anymore. And so, you know, really when I'm compete with Chase, like I really look at her and I, I think she looks at me kind of as a teammate, you know, like we mm-hmm. really go out there, we support each other, we cheer for each other, you know, we make sure each other gets everywhere we need to be on time. Like we really, for us, it's, I, I think it's more like a genuine, like we want to see each other do well. Obviously we always want to win, you know, we sure. want to go as far this, but it's one of those things that like when it comes to chase, like I don't want to beat her because she's not performing well, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And I think she feels the same about me where it's, it's definitely competitive. It's definitely like a rivalry, but that doesn't mean, you know, we can't be friends and we can't support each other through it. What do you think about the world championships coming to Eugene, Oregon? I'm excited. (laughs) Very much so. That's cool. Will we see you compete till 2028? I certainly hope so. I I have no plans of, you know, calling it quits until my body or my performances, you know, start to be like, eh, I should maybe rethink that. <laughs> it <laughs> might be time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I've seen, you know, John Paul uh, got his last medal when he was 37. Um, Valerie Adams has now come back from, I believe, two children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, she's one of my favorite interviews. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she, she is the funniest, one of the funniest people. And she, if someone asks her questions and they don't know about her event, that's about the only time I've ever seen her get a little, not cross, but just a little, well, okay, we're going to teach them a bit. Um, 
So it, it, if you have if, if you had a room of, of sports fans, you know, they watch football and basketball. Mm-hmm. What would you tell them to watch in the shot put? Like to watch for? So, so yeah. Oh. So if they're, if they're watching you throw the shot, how would they as a, you know, they watch football on the weekends. They watch mm-hmm. basketball, maybe a little baseball, and they watch most of them watch track and field during the Olympics. Yeah. So they're watching you in the nationals and they know you're pretty good. Uh-huh. So what what should they watch for you and other shot putters when they're watching the shot put? I think the most important thing to watch to watch for like a good throw is to literally watch the throw like as a whole and watch kind of like the rhythm of it. Because um, for me, it's pretty obvious, you know, what throw is going to be good, what throw is going to be bad. If you watch someone through the ring and they're clunky and choppy and hitting and stopping you know like it's probably not going to be a good throw you know but even gliders you know find a way to make it still like a smooth transition up through like such like a jerky movement movement really so like I think the biggest thing to watch for is just the rhythm and like how smoothly someone can move through the ring and transfer that power into the shot put. I'm going to make you the producer of NBC TV for a day, and you've got a five-minute segment on the shot put. Uh What would you put into that segment so that the average American sports fan could appreciate how cool the shot is and really how good Americans are in the shot put? That's tough. (laughs) Um, Well, I think... I think it's always good to see how kind of your average person looks doing some of these events, you know, because I think that's why it's so hard for people to relate to throwing events because everyone kind of knows how fast they'd run a 100. Everyone kind of knows how far they could maybe run and jump, you know, in a long jump. And, but throwing, there is no, there's nothing they can relate to with it. You know, so I think, I think, almost having like somewhat of an average person, you know, someone who kind of understands it because there is a technique involved come and throw and, and see just how big that gap is between like your average thrower and what we're accomplishing. Um, and then really, I think the biggest thing is, you know, just there are so many good Americans. I, I don't know how you would even show the difference other than literally just collecting your top, you're almost having an Olympic competition, but instead of top three from each country, you know, like you literally just bring the top 12 in the world, you know, because right there you'd have like five Americans and then seven people from random countries, you know? And so it's tough. It's tough to show those things for sure. But if, um, the hammer throw is one of the things you care about too. Mm-hmm. Um, what makes a good hammer throw? The hammer throw a lot, like I just said about shot put, is all about rhythm. You know, how smoothly can you move from entry to turn to turn to turn, building up speed, building up power, without without forcing your actions too much on the ball, which sounds really weird, but really you want the hammer to do a lot of the work. Mm-hmm. And you're just kind of the spinning top that it spins around doing its thing. So really just having that smooth rhythm and ability to very smoothly build up power through the throw, that's what's gonna make a good hammer throw. So one time I asked Carl Lewis if when he was running a world record, Mm -hmm. did it, did it hurt? And he (laughs) told me, no, he said, he said that he got himself in a place that was like, he wasn't feeling pain. He knew things he was, he used the term execution. Mm Mm-hmm. And when I watched the hammer, like I've got these old videos of Imran Nemeth from 1948. He was, his son 
on the 76 job on Miklos. I'm Hungarian, so I know all this stuff. Yeah. Um, but so, and then I watched the, you know, uh, Sadiq and I've watched, you know, all the, the Soviet era throwers and stuff like that. And it's fascinating. Um, the U S had this time where it was amazing in, in the hammer and then it went away and mm-hmm. then it came back again. Um, you know, um, and now we've got these amazing women hammer throwers, you know, um, can you go from throwing the shot to going, okay, I'm going to go compete in the hammer. Can you do that in the same day? Or is that a really difficult thing? No, I, that's, that's pretty standard actually. Um, mm-hmm. You know, at nationals, it, it was uh, for NCAA division one, we threw hammer in the morning and then had the shot that evening. It was about a, two hours in between. Um, so really transitioning like that in a day was pretty standard for me at one time. And you could stay in the rhythm that you talked about. You would have the rhythm for the shot and the rhythm for the hammer. Yep. Yeah. Blue That's so cool. uh, in, in my college days, blue was really good about um, really controlling it psychologically, you know, mm-hmm. and, and making sure like you had a grip on what was going on and not getting swept up in the moment and you know we would we finished hammer you know uh I threw you know like a collegiate record finished hammer he was like no celebrating no nothing he's like go sit down you know do a couple shot drills tell your body it's time to do the other thing go sit down go get ready for shot put you know and that's that's just what you have to do how often do you lift a week four days okay um do you, when you have a really hard day lifting, can you throw the next day? I can throw, but it's going to be a very technical day and it's not going to go very far. Okay. 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 No, I just, I was very curious. Um, you obviously have periods of very hard training mm-hmm. when you're doing, is this right now a hard training period? Um, it's harder. Yeah. Since we really don't have any throwing going on right now, we're doing heavier stuff for sure. So you're lifting four days a week. Mm -hmm. What do you do on the other days? Um, well, I, I pretty much take my weekends as just weekends still. Okay. Okay. Um, and then Wednesdays, cause I do two Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off Thursday, Friday, and pretty much Wednesdays. I just don't do anything um you know maybe some active stuff some yoga some stretching but really Mm -hmm. i just try and give my body a break and then let's hit it hard again for the next two days and then let's take our weekend so that's what mine looks like how important is stretching for a thrower very because we do a lot of very heavy lifting Mm -hmm. and really with hammer throw and shot put you know you're asking a lot of your body you're potentially getting into very strange positions, Mm -hmm. you know, so the more mobile you are, the more you're stretched out, the looser your muscles are, just the less chance of something going wrong, basically. A lot of hip and core flexibility work? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. A lot of hip, core, back. If you're in javelin, you know, obviously then you got shoulder, but that's not me, so. (laughs) Do you do medicine ball work? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> now, when you do that stuff, are you doing it with another person or do you have to do it all by yourself? Um, it varies. Um, I have my coach, you know, who's always ready and willing to help give me that partner atmosphere if that's what I want. But, um, a lot of my stuff is tailored to be able to do it by myself or just against a wall, you know? So I'm pretty self-sufficient in that way. Do you like training by yourself? I do personally. <laughs> I, yeah. I really don't mind the solo training. I'm very, I'm very internally motivated, you know, so not having anyone around, you know, not having anyone cheering me on really doesn't matter for me. What is, um, what's the ideal competitive competition schedule every other week or periods where you're competing every week for a while? 
I think it all depends. You know, I, I think it kind of varies on what's your goals that year, you know, because you don't, you don't want to compete too often. You know, if, if like Doha, it was super late in the year, you know, you don't want to be competing too often where you're wearing yourself out. Um, I think for me, it'd probably be every two weeks is starting to cut it really close, especially mm -hmm. since we go over to Europe a lot. So that's a lot of travel time and that's a lot of, okay, my body needs to resync with this time zone, resync with that time zone. So really it's, it's more like every like three weeks where you go over, do two or three competitions, come home. That's really kind of the better setup, I think. So Kate Schmidt, the U.S. javelin thrower, used to. I, I would ask her. This is how she made money back then. And one of the things she told me is she would get in the snowball competitions. <laughs> she would go up to Scandinavia, yeah. <laughs> and she'd make five grand throwing the snowballs. You know. And um, have you ever done anything like that? Have you ever done anything? Tried no. like. But now I, I mean, wish I'd had. Yeah, yeah. I know they do that in Germany too. And because I, I see, um, oh gosh, uh, Thomas uh, Roller and a couple of the other guys, Johan, I've said, guys, have you done this? They looked at me and they started smiling. They said, oh yeah. So have you done the snowball stuff? So, and then there's one I read about in the Wall Street Journal, somewhere in Florida, they do a frozen mullet throwing competition in the winter every year. It's money for it. And the winter every year is a discus thrower. They throw, it's about a two pound mullet <laughs> and they throw like 200 feet. I'm just kind of going, you know, <laughs> it would keep it interesting. Um, do you, do you like these, um, the street shot competitions? Have you done those in Europe? Yeah, I have. I like them. I, I think they're fun. It's like, it's just a nice kind of change of pace you know we've done so many of just your traditional in the stadium go throw a shot you know mm -hmm. have all these other events going on which i will say is usually fun to watch you know watch the other events kind of take your mind off of it just a little bit mm -hmm. but the stream meets are a lot of fun it's, it's cool to see you know kind of the different cultures the different environments that you get into and it, it's fun to watch people just kind of walk by and like oh Oh, oh, and just kind of pull up to the fence and be like, yeah, we'll sit here and watch this. They're fun. What do you have a favorite competition in Europe that you like to compete in? Ooh, I, I mean, I've only had one professional season, so I don't have a lot to draw off of. But um, I did a street meet in Monaco. Uh my first year out of college and that that was just so much fun that one was so yeah. cool yeah it was very enjoyable and did you get to see the boats in the harbor of the people who have that's a, right more... where the pump was right next wow to the yeah that's <laughs> no, the first time <laughs> the, 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 i was staying in menton and i would take the bus in for the meets at the stade mm -hmm. louis and we're driving along and you would see these ships and i'm going to the bus driver who has those? And he just looked at me and he goes, the rich people. I said, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. A big difference. Um, the, um, do you like competing at the U S indoor champs? I do. Yeah. I mean, I, I really like any time that, you know, you can get together and you know, that like the best, of the best of that category are going to be there, you know? So mm -hmm. I love knowing like, okay, I'm going to see, you know, Chase, I'm going to see Michelle, I'm going to see Raven, I'm going to see Jessica, you know, like sure. I'm going to see all those names that like I want to see. Mm -hmm. you know, so I, I love it anytime we can get together. And I love indoors. I love wood rings and the rubber balls. So I'm all about it. Do you like, now in, in a U.S. indoor, would you do the weight and the shot or would you just do the shot? No, no, I, I kind of consider myself just a hammer thrower. Okay. Um, yeah, the weight, a little too taxing on my back. So Okay, okay, yeah. I was just curious because some people kind of yeah. kind of like it, some people don't. Um, the uh, As an aficionado of the discus, were you mm -hmm. surprised with Valerie Almond's big throw? 
Not at all. No, I think I think those of us who I mean who know Val first of all, um, and just know you know have watched what she's capable of over the years. You know, you could just see it. You saw yeah. the slow trend. You know, you saw her throw sixty four, and you watched her still kind of miss it at sixty four. You know, and you're like, dang, I wish I could miss a throw and it goes sixty four. <laughs> But yeah, I think those of us who know Val and have watched her over her career, we're just kind of like, it's about time, you know, like we, we've expected this of you and we're so happy you've finally done it. <laughs> uh, a week after, a couple weeks after Ryan's uh, world record indoors, um, yeah. I asked him about his throws in the series. Mm -hmm. And I said, what was the throw you were happiest with? And he surprised me and he didn't surprise me. He said the 2282 really wasn't the best technical throw. Mm -hmm. I said, was it the 2270? He said, oh, no. And he smiled at it. It was the 2123. And I <laughs> said, talk to me about it. And he said, I executed well. Mm -hmm. I put everything through that. Have you had throws like that where you're throwing a great series? And the big throws, there's just a little something off. Oh, yeah. But the little throws are like... I know I got it now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. For me, for me, it's, it's like the most frustrating days in competition or at practice when you can feel it, you can feel it. You're just the tiniest cue away. You know, you're just the tiniest degree away from just making a huge throw out of a throw. That's just all right. You know, and really those are the most frustrating, but I think they happen to all of us. Okay, this is going to be the toughest part. You're down to four minutes now. Okay. I'm going to try to give you five athletes' names, and you're allowed three words to describe them. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> now, I'll give you five. I did this with John Ridgen the other day, and he was – it was really funny to watch him. Although he did say that Grant Holloway was going to get Colin Jackson's world record, and he's come oh so close. <laughs> um, start with Valerie Allman. Uh Three words. Okay. Talented. Nice. Um, oh gosh. She's just awesome. I love Val. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um Raven. Ooh. I like Raven. Um Raven is just relentless. She is just she will get it done. She is incredibly determined. Um Really, I think she's just a fighter. She's just going to make it happen. Uh, Michelle Carter. Oh, I like Michelle. Um, she's like the mom of the group, kind of. She just kind of keeps the ball in check. She's so respectful and responsible of everybody. And, um, oh, my gosh, she's like my shot put hero. So she's my hero. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Valerie Adams. Mm, she's funny. <laughs> I really like Val. She's funny. She's, she is just honest. And, uh, she's a lot like Raven where if she wants it, she is just relentless. She's going to go get it. Is there an athlete that you admire that you have like, Thing that you felt inspired you to get into the sport or still inspires you? Yeah, I mean, I guess in that regard, it would have to be um, kind of everyone in my family. Um, my dad, you know, he was a collegiate thrower. He was the first person to ever All-American at Illinois State University. Went on Ooh. to throw the hammer at the Olympic trials. You know, he incredibly talented. He, he like never had a coach. He did it all on his own, you know, and wow. he learned on his own. And so, I mean, he's, you know, obvious role model, you know, my sister always, you know, little sister always wants to be like her older sister. And she just paved the way for me in so many things that I just always followed in her footsteps. And my mom, she uh, played volleyball at Ohio state. She was the first alternate for the volleyball Olympic team. Um, wow. Incredibly talented one, but really all three of them have just held my hand through the whole collegiate process through learning how to be this level of athlete, you know, like they, they're really the ones that have 
made it happen for me, I think, and made it made it easy for me to get to this level. Well, Maggie, you and you survived 39 and a half minutes with me. Great job. <laughs> yeah. And thank you so much. And I think you're going to help educate my viewers on the shot, the discus, the hammer, you know. <laughs> yeah. And um, we look forward to seeing you competing this springtime. Me so too. Stay, stay safe. Uh, enjoy the snow and the cold. Uh, just stay out of it. But <laughs> um, this is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. We've had Socialing the Distance and we've featured Maggie Ewan, who is, I'm calling her a renaissance thrower. She is uh, world class in the shot, in the hammer, and uh, the discus, although she really is in the hammer and the the shot now and we will see her outdoors hopefully at the upcoming olympic trials and before that but uh, maggie thank you so much for taking the time today yeah, thank you really so much for having me hey sports fans this is larry eater with run blog run this is socialing the distance your favorite weekly program and uh we featured maggie ewan maggie was fourth in the shot put at the doha world championships in 2018, she was first in the shot at the U.S. Champs and second in the hammer. Um, she also can throw the discus, although she focuses on the hammer and the shot. And she's up in Fargo, North Dakota, um, with her coach, I believe, Kurt Lang. And um, the um, it was a fascinating um, social in the distance. And why so? Um, Maggie is a athlete who is going from the college world. She's had she's been a professional athlete for just over a year. Um, got to watch her compete in Belarus at the match in uh, September of 2019, just before the World Champs, and everything's pretty new for her. Um, but she's in a, from a family that has great athletic experience. Her dad was a uh, hammer thrower. Her mom was a volleyball player and was on the alternate team uh, for the Olympics. Her sister was a discus thrower and, that, or thrower, and that's how she got into it. She started throwing the discus when she was in fourth grade. Very enthusiastic, very into it. Um, we talked about the nature of competition. We, I asked her about um, can she compete with someone and still like them? Uh, can she differentiate between the competition and the person and shut it down when they compete? And she can. And it, it, it was really uh, an education. Also learning a little bit about uh, keys to the shot, keys to the discus and keys to the hammer, but also on how TV should properly show the shot put. I thought she had a fascinating idea about taking some of the best, taking the top 12 in the world, knowing that four or five were going to be Americans, and talk to them a little bit about how they compete, how they throw. I think it would be a great way than some of the up close and personal stuff we do now. Anyway, um, Maggie is a, a, um, a tremendously talented athlete, and I think we're going to see a lot more from, from her. Being fourth place in a world championships your first year as a pro tells you something. And uh, it tells me that we're going to be seeing her around for a long time. I asked her if she would compete through 2028. She said she hopes so. And, you know, I forgot that she's like 22 years old. And, and people like John Powell competed until they were 37 and won medals back in, what, 87 world champs? So um, discus throwers, or throwers, shot putters, and hammer throwers, tend to have long careers. They can stay healthy. And uh, we look forward to seeing Maggie Ewan compete in the future. This is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. This is our program, Socialing the Distance. We featured Renaissance thrower Maggie Ewan. She is a shot putter. She is a hammer thrower. And her first love was the discus. And uh, I think we'll see her in many world championships to come. If you like Run Blog Run, like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you love us, really love us, as Sally Field would say, uh, then subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have about 369 videos and audios from 2020. We have over 2,500 audios and videos 
from 2010 to the present, there's something from everyone. You know, you can have conversations with Larry. You can have uh, social in the distance. You can have athletics chats. You can have weird training stuff. You can have, you know, I, I don't think I talked about, you know, Area 51. But, you know, if you want me to do something on Area 51, just email me at runblogrun at gmail.com. We'll come up with something. Anyway, stay safe. If you're inside, wear a mask. If you're outside and you can't be six feet separated, wear a mask. Get the vaccine when you can. Uh, please be careful. And um, it's not attack attacking your sexuality if you wear a mask, okay? Uh, you're actually protecting people around you, too. And that's really patriotic. And that's really manly or womanly or whatever genderly that you decide to, to identify with, okay? Uh, most of all, just pull your head out and think about other people. That's probably the best thing. This is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. That was a Wisconsin goodbye.